Howdy folks. So I've seen lots of substance designer stuff up on the web uh, about creating rocks and cliffs and things of that nature. So I've decided to give it a go in Houdini. So this is sort of the end results you could aim towards. Uh, I don't know if we'll do all the steps in this. I think I'll take you through a simpler version that show you kind of the highlights. I initially tried to do all this stuff in COPS. COPS hasn't seen a huge amount of updates in recent years. So I struggled to create interesting designs there. So what I did instead was I came out two SOPs uh, because we've got loads and loads and loads in SOPs. So we can make our patterns over here and pump them over into SOP, into COPS. So I create this shape, which I uh, kind of copy around a little bit. And then I turn that into a height field. So I end up with a shape that looks like this. And this is the kind of thing that you'd be trying to build out in Substance Designer with various different nodes, uh, warps, etc. to try and build this kind of shape. Okay. And we can do all our height field stuff now because it's a height field. So we've got masking and all the rest of that. Uh, so that gets me a little bit more visual interest here. I can break it up a little bit more. And then I can send this over to COPS. So I can send this over to COPS because there is a node in here called SOP import. Okay, so that pulls all of this information basically into um, like a, a height map that I can do compositing operations to. So if I jump over to the compositor here, we can take a look at what comes in. So this is what's coming in from that height field. And then I can start doing lots of texture type stuff. So I can take different patterns and I can kind of meld them together and very much in sort of the nuke fashion of layering things up. And COPS, it's a little bit old in the toot now, but it is very similar to Nuke. So if you've used that, you should be comfortable in here. And what I can do is layer all that up and then I can output that back into another height field. So if I jump back over to my scene view over here, we can take a look at our original height fields beside our newer one. So there's the original height field and here's my new height field. And you can see I get lots of extra details. Okay, and that's quite nice because often with height fields, they tend to be a little bit on the softer side. And they tend to do large shapes quite well and small shapes, like small noisy type shapes quite well. But we lose a lot of those um, medium shapes, right? So this helps to bring some of those back in. Um, so and then I can happily mix between my texture stuff over in COPS and my height field. Uh, but we can also write those out as textures and we can bring those back in. Again, and we can use a triplanar displace and then we can start display displacing geometry, right? So this is a triplanar displacement onto a sphere. On it. And then you're back in SOPS land and you can do all your normal SOPS stuff. So colouring it, etc. And you end up with something that looks like this. So that's the overall process. And we're going to give a go at building out the basics of that. So you can see some of the gotchas. So I'm going to start off with a simple scene. Um, what I've got here is a box which I am transforming up in size because height fields are pretty big and I'm doing a poly extrude on it. So I'm poly extruding it down Z because I'm going to copy stamp it in a minute and Houdini likes objects pointing down Z when doing copy stamping. Um, I'm just selecting a face number two in this case and I'm just insetting it to get this roof like shape. Uh, I'm subdividing that and I'm passing a mountain through it and then I'm poly reducing it down. And that's really just to sort of break up the overall shape so it doesn't feel too CG. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start scattering that. So I'm going to put down a grid and I'm going to put down a mountain underneath that grid just so it's not flat. And then I'm going to create some attributes on it which I'm going to randomize. So I want one for scale and I'm going to want another one for... Um, orientation so for n so let's just throw those down uh, let's break it up a little bit here so let's give it a bit more in terms of breaking it up so i'm going to create a scale attribute here which i will put in some minimum and maximum values for so again i'm just putting in some sort of random values here just to kind of break it up on the different axes and uh, let's do 1.4 there something like that and on the normal, I am going to, so that's this one here. I change this to N for normal. And we can change this over to direction or orientation. And uh, let's change the, be able to change the cone angle and the bias direction here so that we can just change the angle. And I'll show you exactly what they're doing in just a second when I start. Okay, you'll get a better idea of what they're doing after we copy them. So I'll copy to points here. Let's take our shape and start to copy it onto our points. Now our shape is much, much bigger than our grid. So let's go back to our grid and uh, change it to 
50 by 50. Now I've got these referenced already, so that's 50 by 50. And now we're starting to get something a little bit more interesting going on in terms of the shapes. Um, so let's go back and adjust our scale now. So we have this kind of global scale that will blow everything up and down. And then we've got these sort of minimum and maximum values that we can play around with for X, Y, and Z, right? So we can start to play around with these a little bit just to break up the shapes a little bit more. And similarly for our rotations here, we can start to sort of rotate these shapes around to get more interesting shapes in there. And we can sort of bias the direction one way or another, just through here. So I want to get some more distinct shapes in here. So uh, let's pull down maybe my overall size of my rocks just a little bit here. I'm going to jump back to my grid and I'm going to lower this. I've got it down. I had it about 10. I'm going to pull it down to about six here, something like this, just so I get some sort of bigger shapes rather than having loads and loads of small shapes. OK, uh, so I can come back and adjust all these later. Uh, let's put down a null and we'll call this um, out shapes. Uh, what I want to do is turn this over into a height field. So I'm going to put down a height field over here and I'm going to put down a height field project just here and I'll plug my height field into the left and my shapes into the right and that will project my height field onto my shapes. Now the problem is, is that the height field is huge and my shapes are quite small and I want to bring it down to the smaller size. So I'm going to take my height field here and I'm going to match it to the, the grid. So I'm going to take the grid size, I'm going to copy the parameter here and into my size, I'm going to say paste relative reference and the same thing here, paste relative reference. And then I'm going to uh, up the resolution here. Instead of it being by size, I'm going to set it to by axis and it's going to take uh, 512 grid samples now. So I get much more detail and it's picking up all of my nice shapes. OK, uh, now uh, so I could break this up with all of my height field tools. Uh, but I'm going to keep it pretty simple. If you type HF here, you get all the height field ones. And I'm going to just use some noise. Uh, so I'm going to distort by noise oop, down here. And that will just break up my shapes a little bit. And it's a little bit like a, a kind of a warp that you might have in substance. Okay, so I get a little bit more of an organic feel to the rock. So there's lots more we can do with our height field. Uh, but I am eager to get over into compositing. So let's put down a null. And we'll say out... And our nulls should be capitals out towards cops. And let's put down a cop network. So we'll go cop to network here. Uh, so this is how we get into a compositor in Houdini. So we can dive in here. Now, compositing is 2D. So you need to change from your 3D viewer over here or your scene view over to your composite view. And there is a couple of little things we want to set up before we start our composite. So let's go to edit and we're going to set our compositing settings. Uh, so this by default will probably be 1920 by 1080 or something like that. But I'm going to change it to 512 by 512. And uh, it's already set up for me. You're going to click accept or apply there. And you can close that off. And that means that any nodes we create will be created at 512 by 512. Um, and we can up res them later. We can, uh, we can go up to 1K or 2K or whatever we need. So put down a SOP import, and this is going to pull in my height field information. We just need to tell it where to look. So we're going to go to out cops and click accept there. And that's brought it in, but we need, and you can kind of see there is some information coming in here, but I need to remap the height information and keep in mind the height field could be quite high. Um, you know, it could be quite large. Uh, so we need to remap it between zero and one. So we turn this on so we get the values between zero and one, and now we can see them in the viewer just here. Okay. Um, now, by default, the height field information is being pulled into C, which is the color value for uh, for cops. OK, so it's getting pumped into C at the moment. It is possible to set the image planes from SOPs. Um, we're not going to do that in this case because I want to be able to see it in the viewer. Uh, but if you do hit this button here, you would get a list of custom planes. Why would you want to do that? Well, you might have masks that you've created over in uh, over in your height fields that you want to bring in. So you'd need to bring them in as custom planes. Okay, but I'm going to leave it just as is for the moment. And that means if it's in the, the kind of color channel, uh, I'll be able to do all my normal cop stuff without having to copy the channels around. Um, so inside in cops, then I can start compositing this thing together. Uh, so I don't know, a simple example would be, let's do uh, levels. And if I hit shift and enter, it will put the node down underneath and hook it up for me. 
and I can just grab the input and grab the output there, some, something like this, right? Um, so, uh, and maybe we'll just do a blur or something like that. Put a blur down here and we can blur off the image here like this, right? So there's lots more we can do in here and we can be very clever in Zygon Cops. Uh, but let's just output this thing so we can see what it looks like as a height field. So let's put down a null and we'll call this null, call it cop out, right? And let's go back up a level. So how do we get the cop information back over into SOPS? So let's go back to our scene view over here. So let's put down a height field file node. And this would read a default um, height map from disk. If you had one, you could go and point it uh, towards it. But in our case, I want to point it towards a cop. And I'm going to point it towards the cop network and cop out and hit accept here. And let's go take a look. Uh, so that has done something. So our height field has appeared, but we're not seeing very much detail at the moment. Uh, so let's try playing around with the height scale. So I'm going to put this up to 200 or something like that. And there you go. Now we're pulling through the height field information um, from cops back onto this height field file. Maybe I'll put that down to 100 there like this. And that means that I can come back over here to my composite view and I can play around with my levels here and I will get more or less of my height field. Or I could come along with my blur here and I could sharpen it up or soften it off. Okay, and pump that back out onto a new height field and do more stuff to it over there. Okay, so that's the basic data flow. We create some shapes, which we project a height field onto, which we bring into cops, which we can do cop stuff to, which we can bring back to height fields. Now, that should allow for enough flexibility for us to use all of the SOP nodes that we need to create interesting shapes, much like you do over in Substance Designer, and all of our cop nodes to get finer detail. So hopefully that should be enough to get you started and we should be able to start translating some of the Substance Designer techniques over into Houdini. I will potentially take a look at doing a kind of a part two where I'll build out this network a little bit more. Um, in the background here, you can see a version I created with Flippy and you know, you can extend the system relatively easily to try and build out uh, more interesting surfaces that can be applied across your models. So hopefully that'll give you a little bit of inspiration to move on to next steps. Um, I hope you got something from this video and I will see you in the next one.